What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to show you how to take your blood pressure manually. My name's Tony, I'm a physical therapist assistant and this is my assistant. I hired her off Fiverr. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is my wife, Kara. She knows nothing about taking blood pressure. Um, so today's challenge is if I can show her how to take my blood pressure, then all of you guys should be able to know how to do it by the end of this video. And if she doesn't know how to do it, then this video is absolutely trash. Use it as a how-to not to take your blood pressure. First things first, do you know what this is called? Mm-hmm. A blood pressure cuff and a stethoscope. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. The medical term for this is a sphygmometer. Mm -hmm. Sphygmomanometer. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. Spell that, spell that for me. It's spelled S-P-H-Y-mometer. How many syllables is that? Clap them out. Big mama. <laughs> Big mama. Is that Fig, four? It's fig. Oh yeah, I think it's four or five will go with. Sphygmometer, one. What is blood pressure? Let's maybe start there. Yeah. Blood pressure is, that's what we're trying to measure here. And that is when your heart contracts, that's the systolic pressure in your blood vessels. And then when it relaxes, that's the diastolic blood pressure. So if you picture this as like your artery, when your heart goes doo -doo and contracts and your blood pumps through, through your, your vein here, it gets fat. It like, if I could fatten this up, that is systolic. It's when your blood vessel expands, and then when it shrinks down small after the blood passes through, that is your diastolic pressure. It's the pressure on your blood vessel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, yeah. The easiest way to use one of these manual tests is to throw it away and get an automatic one. <laughs> a digital <laughs> yeah. readout. Those are so much faster, but honestly, the difference between a, a digital one and one of these is these are actually a little more accurate than the digital ones. Sometimes those can be a little funky if your batteries are dying or whatnot. It's gonna come with this gauge. It's measured in millimeters of mercury. That's how you measure blood pressure. All the big numbers go by intervals of 20. All the half little marks in there go by intervals of 10 and all the small little dashes go by intervals of two. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this on. Let's just put it on. Let's just do it. Go for it. Show everyone Get how this crazy. is done. We're getting crazy now. <laughs> this little end of your stethoscope here, you're gonna put that on our brachial artery. You can feel for it, you can palpate and feel her pulse there, and that's how you know where her brachial artery is at. You're gonna snug this up. You don't wanna over tighten it and you don't want it to be loose falling off her arm. You should be able to slide your fingers in there still. Um, and then you're gonna line this up. Typically, when we take someone's blood pressure, we put it on their left arm. The only time you wouldn't is if she was missing this limb. No, something drastic like that. We always usually do it on the left arm and then typically, you want their arm to be elevated at heart level, but in this case, it's gonna be a little lower because Whatever, this is janky, I'm in my house. This isn't a doctor's office, okay? This is Tony's doctor's office. Yes, <laughs> let's open a doctor's office. The first thing you're gonna wanna do after you get her blood pressure cuff on is you're gonna wanna put your ears in. Once you put those in your ears, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten up this knob, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So this thing is kinda like a stress ball, you can squeeze it. When you tighten it up, it just expands this and puts air in it. And what's gonna happen on here is that needle is gonna start rising. So you ask the patient, what is your normal blood pressure? Do you know what it is? Probably around the 120 over 80, maybe a little less. What you do after you know around what their normal blood pressure is, what you typically wanna do is pump it up 30 numbers higher than her normal. So if she says her normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, you wanna pump this up to at least 150 over 80, just so you can get an accurate reading when it drops back down. After it's pumped up, all the way pumped up, and you slowly start letting air out, you're gonna see the needle drop all the way down to zero. You're gonna to wanna to let it out kinda of slow. It's gonna go at about uh, two millimeters of mercury set per second. The first sound you hear when your ears are in, that's her systolic blood pressure, and then the last sound you hear is her diastolic like blood pressure. So when you're listening to it, the needle actually moves when you hear it at yeah. the same time. So when you're listening, it'll sound like the needle does it. The needle doesn't just drop at a consistent rate. What it does is it drops like this. Then once your blood starts flowing through, it goes doom, 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 doom. So you're gonna hear it and you're also gonna see the needle jumping every time your heart beats. That's how you know you're doing it right. And the first number you hear, the first sound you hear, that's systolic, last number you hear, diastolic. And that is how you check your blood pressure. I tighten it up. I'm pumping it up. The needle's raising up. That's filling with air. I went way too high. <laughs> 
I was, I was talking. All right. So now you want to go nice and slow and listen to where it's coming at. So her blood pressure was 116 over 70. That's a little normal. That's normal. That's not low. <laughs> it's a little normal. What they say a normal blood pressure is, is less than 120 over 80. So she's 116 over 70. That's a normal blood pressure. If you actually go too low, if you're going, if your systolic number is below 100, then that's actually not very good. You could actually pass out if your blood pressure is super low, um, but she's normal. And you also don't want to be above 120 over 80. So these are your stages of blood pressure. So if you have 120 between 129 that's an elevated blood pressure high blood pressure or stage 1 hypertension is 130 to 139 uh, stage 2 hypertension is 140 or higher and then hypertensive crisis where you need to go see in like a doctor or go to the ER right away is if you're higher than 180 that is way too high for your blood pressure um, so don't do that. I'm now it's your turn. You. <laughs> yeah. See if I pass the test. Moment of truth here. All right. First thing you do, cuff them. She's doing my right arm because oh, yeah. we don't feel I'm like. I'm not switching spots. All right, this goes on brachial artery. If I knew what that was, it'd probably be a little better. Can you try to feel it? Somewhere. See if you can feel it. I have to feel the vein move, like. Yeah, you can, oh, can, you I can just check my it? pulse. No. Isn't it that? No, it's not. You're gonna have to feel a pulse. This wasn't part of the instructions. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, she still can't feel it. <laughs> Stethoscope in. Righty tidy. All right. So, um, what's your normal blood pressure reading? 120 over 80. All right. I'm gonna pump you up to 150 then. Ah! Is that, I'm just that actually scared me. <laughs> Slowly let it out. Is that too fast? No, that's good. Okay. Right there, that face. Keep that face the whole time. Okay, so that seemed like a 110 over like 76-ish. Is yeah. that what it looked like yeah, to you? Yeah, that's what it looked like. I can't hear the noises, but you can still see the needle ticking and yeah. know roughly it what it quiet, is. quiet, but... It would have been louder if she had had this lined up on my <laughs> yeah, brachial artery. Probably why. <laughs> the best tip I would give you is to practice. Uh, the more you practice with it, feeling for the brachial artery, the more you practice with listening to it, the more you practice with maneuvering this little dial on here and airing it up and letting air out, the easier it's gonna become and you're gonna feel more natural and you're gonna, the patient's gonna feel more comfortable with you because you know what you're doing you're not gonna be scrambling around like figuring out how to do stuff so just practice more and it'll feel a lot easier when yeah. you go to work with an actual patient also things that can influence your blood pressure is like smoking if they ran before they got here if they're nervous their blood pressure can be elevated and it can kind of skew the results so sometimes ask the patient hey what were you doing before this did you take a smoke break while running to get here <laughs> then you can be like yes well maybe let's wait a little bit and then we'll take your blood pressure other than that, we hope this was helpful. If it's not, I'm sorry. Go watch another video then. <laughs> no, just whatever. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, be sure to hit a thumbs up on it, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we did. See you on another one. Peace. And it's going to cut off her brachial artery. And then this is, I don't know if it technically cuts it off. <laughs> Let me see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is blood and that's out. why you have to test on my right arm next yeah. time. Anyways.